Thanks for clicking. My name is Mark Mitchell. I'm a mortgage broker here in London, Ontario. Today I wanted to talk about mortgage rates and go through a quick update. As you may have seen, that mortgage rates have been popping up dramatically over the last few weeks, uh, with many of the big five banks raising their rates well over 2%. As lenders are getting more and more worried about inflation, uh, with high inflation in the U.S. reaching over 5%, which made big headlines last week, and Canadian inflation last month going over 4%, uh, more and more of the banks are getting worried that inflation could go, could skyrocket in the short to long-term future, which could lead to much higher borrowing costs. In anticipation of this, we're starting to see major rate hikes. So what I wanted to do today is briefly go over why these rates are going so high, what are the best mortgage rates right now, and then br just briefly review what to expect for the future, as there's a debate going on over how hot the Bank of Canada will let inflation run. For its part, Stats Canada will be releasing its inflation data for September in the next few days, which will definitely help shape this debate. And we do have the monetary policy report coming out from the Bank of Canada as well in the next week or so, uh, which will list, which we expect to have some real estate predictions in that. So make sure you click like and subscribe to get those updates. But for now, let's get into the interest rates. As mentioned, mortgage rates are going up all over the place, which are mostly a reaction to rising bond yields, which are a reaction to higher than the usual inflation. So if you're the bank and you know that inflation is going to run at 5%, you're not going to want to lend your money out at 2% as your money is going to be worth less the year after you lend it out than it was the year that you lent it out. So as inflation goes higher, so do interest rates, as investors look to protect themselves against a shrinking value of their money. So what? So now let's just briefly go over the best mortgage rates. Uh, the best five-year insured rate, that's where you put less than 20% down, right now is 2.09. The best five-year insurable rate, that's where you put 20% down, but you don't have to pay the mortgage insurance, and the best rate for that is 2.19. The best uninsured rate, that's where either you take money out of your house or you go with a 30-year amortization. 20% down is still needed. The best rate for that is 2.24. And the best no-frills product rate, that's where you don't have any prepayment privileges. There's huge penalties for breaking your mortgage, um, et cetera, et cetera. And the best five-year insured rate for that right now is 1.83. Now, if you'll remember a few months ago, most of these rates were below 2%. I remember doing a refinance for a client back in March, and we were looking at 1.84. So between that 1.84 and 2.24, that's a 0.4% spread. That's big for interest rates, and it could be growing even larger as rates continue to go up. Whether or not they're going to go up does seem to be, it is a matter of great of heated debate amongst uh, economists, bankers, the central bankers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But this really is all going to come down to inflation, and there's two there's two camps on whether or not they're going to have to raise rates based on what people are predicting for inflation. There's one camp that thinks it's transitory, and that the higher inflation that we're seeing is just a result of people getting back to work. Just a flesh wound and everything being so low last year with the first year of the pandemic. And there's another camp that says, no, this is all a result of sh supply shortages, the chip shortages, and that we're not going to see inflation go down to the 2 to 3% we expect for quite a long time. Personally, I think inflation is going to continue to rise up. Um, RBC made an announcement a few days ago saying that they expect Canadians to spend and spend a lot now that everything's going back to semi-normal. Uh, I guess Canadians have over $180 billion in excess savings, and people are gonna want that to run rampant. When you have that combined with the sh supply shortages and you have the chip shortages, it doesn't look like we're gonna be looking at a deflationary spiral, that's for sure. Well, not for sure, nothing's for sure, but it does seem to, it does look like all of these factors are conspiring to to have prices rise up. We also have a real estate crisis and energy crisis in China. I'm not sure if you've been to the pumps, but the cost of inputs, the cost of transporting our goods, also doesn't look like it's gonna be going down anytime soon either. And oil prices are expected to continue to go up. All this tells me inflation is going to continue and it's gonna to continue to go up even higher. With that said, I'm only but one man. 
we'll have to wait and see what the data comes out, what the data says when it comes out. It's expected to be released at the end of the week. Um, well, actually, it's expected to be released on Wednesday. So click like and subscribe to get the video on our inflation data. And thanks for watching.